we're going to get started. Welcome everyone. My name is Jennifer Austin Folks, and I'm the manager of our Oceans program at Google. So the purpose of today's session is to talk about storytelling using Google products, Google Maps, Google Earth, and potentially some other products like Panoramio, uh, Google Plus, our social networking app, YouTube. And uh, so we have a number of uh, different products that have been useful to conservation organizations and nonprofits, government organizations, scientists, and just individual photographers, videographers, and citizens to communicate uh, what they're passionate about, what they're working on. Um, the project to create a virtual ocean in Google Earth, which is what you're seeing right here, this standalone software, uh, which is available in 32 languages and it's been downloaded over a billion times is um, anyone can download for free and put on your uh, computer and um, it's uh, it has this sort of explorable ocean which you can see right here and we built that over the last four years and launched it three years ago and the project started uh, as inspired by um, Sylvia Earle who just arrived here and do so I think it's a fun introductory story because it kind of just sets the stage for this whole project in our program. Sylvia was at a conference in Spain uh, with one of the founders of Keyhole, which became Google Earth when we acquired it, um, probably seven years ago. Um, and Sylvia was like, hey, I love Google Earth, but you should really call it Google Dirt because you're missing three quarters of the planet. And, uh, and he laughed on stage, and he's like, you're right, Sylvia. Uh, and he came back to Google and, and had us host her to a tech talk, and um, she helped us build a set of uh, advisors, a, a, an advisory council. And with them, we've worked to build a, the best consumer map of the oceans, which you can see here, and then a huge amount of educational content, which uh, my colleagues here today will help us understand better. Uh, if we go right here to this layers panel in the bottom left hand uh, part of the screen, you can see we have, we have built over 20 layers including the Explore the Ocean layer and um, Archive, we have Ed Edwards here from Archive, and the National Geographic quiz and maps content, um, and we have John Francis here from National Geographic, uh, not seeing it now. and then Dan, um, Lawfully from ICN um, has helped us create this wonderful marine protected areas layer. So you see all the sort of white highlighted areas. Um, those are all marine protected areas. And um, we've worked with many partners to help gather uh, content. So let's see if I don't have the <coughs> keyboard, I realize. Um, let me just use the mouse. So this sort of uh, virtual experience of the ocean really started out uh, at Sylvia's, Sylvia's inspiration, and she's always said, uh, with knowing comes caring, and with caring there's hope. So I think the idea is that we create this sort of virtual ocean experience, and then make it available for anyone, educators, uh, government officials, anyone who's trying to bring these remote areas and remote issues into people's homes, desktops, um, uh, phones, actually, Google Earth is available on your iPhone, iPad, Android tablet, Android phone. So you can download it for free, and you can actually turn on the ocean education layer from within the Android phone. And all of these little place marks right here, like here's a circle uh, from the Mission Blue Explore the Ocean layer. This is a deep squid. All of these little circles, I'm just going to turn off photos real quick because there are a lot of them. Um, and all of these little pieces of content are photos, videos, stories about what is happening in the ocean. And I want to start in Monterey Bay Canyon. So I'm at Google, um, and Google is based right south of San Francisco at the base of the bay here. And that's our main headquarters, and we have offices everywhere. Um, or it feels like that. And right off co the coast is a canyon deeper than the Grand Canyon called Monterey Bay. And what you see here is as you double click on the ocean, um, you can start to see an ocean surface, it's virtual, it's moving, and you can keep clicking and actually go under the water. Now we have better data in some places than others, but this is Monterey Bay, and 
you can sort of look around. Sometimes you have issues with that. Maybe use a keyboard. But um, we'll go back. And you can place the content, educational content, actually underwater. Which I think is a sort of neat feature. Because uh, traditionally, there's no sort of virtual canvas. And as you zoom in, zoom in, zoom in again closer, and I usually look up here, there's like this sort of eyeball thing. You can start to go under, and then you can look up and see some of the educational stories, like this one, learn about humpback whales, or whatever it is might be in the ocean area you're trying to communicate about. Now, as you fly around Earth, you'll see that some areas have better sort of canvases of the ocean than others. So as we zoom out here, We've got really beautiful data from Monterey Bay Canyon, um, from Mbari, many data sources. And here is a beautiful seamount called Davidson Seamount. We're continually trying to improve this map of the oceans. And so we've worked with, you know, probably over 40, 50 organizations to publish their data from mapping the ocean. So you can see this is Davidson Seamount, and by having that sort of virtual canvas of the ocean, that lets you actually place videos and photos in context. So it lets you start to annotate the ocean and kind of bring it alive. Let's see what this will play. Um, all the videos are just done from the YouTube. Marine Bay Aquarium Research Institute have been conducting biological surveys at seamounts along the coast of California since 2000. Davidson Seamount is an underwater mountain located approximately 75 miles southwest of Monterey Bay. We found a variety of organisms including these sponges and other animals like corals which are quite long-lived. Corals like these bubblegum corals can live for several hundred years and can grow nine feet tall. So it's really an engaging effort with many, many partners. And this education layer has many contributions from National Geographic, from the Smithsonian, from NOAA, from people all over the world, uh, photographers in Bari. And the curator of this layer, Charlotte Vick, works for Sylvia's Mission Blue Foundation. And she has worked extensively with contributors to help them write their stories in a more engaging way. So that will sort of reach out to a general audience. The world has become very sort of uh, short attention span, and they usually try to target videos that are two or three minutes long. And it's really become, I think, a great tool for anyone to start to learn about what's in the ocean and to take people there in a virtual way and tell them the story of what's going on there for what many people, uh, for you know, they just don't know, right? I mean, most people have probably not been in the ocean, or if they have, it's only been on the coast. And so there's not necessarily a lot of, uh, you know, of understanding where to start. You know, where do you go? Where do you learn? Start to learn about what's happening. So this is um, where we are right now, the Latte Hotel, which I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing. And and I just want to zoom out to give us a little bit of context. We're in the hotel. Here is the beach, which I still haven't been to. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we have a photos there so you can virtually see what the beach looks like. Uh, and that's about as close as I've gotten to it so far. Uh, we have a dive and surf layer, so you can see some people surf there, which is kind of neat. And as we keep zooming out, this is kind of a neat project. Uh, when we first got here, I, I've been receiving emails um, about the uh, concerns over the naval base construction. And I kept looking online, with, you know, trying to figure out where, you know, where is it, where is the area in question. But I couldn't find it. And then I emailed one of the folks who had been sending the emails, and he's like, "Oh, here it is." And he gave us a lot long. And so we have this education layer. And what Amber did, Amber's working uh, for with us with Mission Blue uh, as, as an intern. She um, took the video that they shared and actually put it in the education layer. And that's roughly the area that potentially will be affected. And one of the divers had gone and taken this video. And it's really neat because now, you know, in, in overnight updates every night, um, the group has a login. 
and they have their video, and it's a way to, you know, anyone that wants to go and figure out, you know, where is this area in question, what are the decisions being made, um, you know, what, what is at stake, what's interesting, what does it look like underwater, we were hoping to get to go diving, but I'm not sure if there will be time, but now we can sort of start to see what it looks like underwater here, the soft corals, the fish, the marine life, and I think it's a neat, um, a neat tool to really start to bring the ocean alive and help people see um, what potentially you know is going on, what decisions are being made. You know, uh, I'm going to skip ahead really quickly here to new breaks. I love new breaks. So, um, so that's a that's a neat tool and. Um, and it's, it's very fulfilling in the sense that, you know, we didn't have any educational content in our layer, right, around Jeju. So this is a start, and we hope to find local partners, find local contributors who can, you know, start to annotate and tell the story of what's here. You know, here's a, apparently a dive site um, off, off Jeju from the dive layer. And, and so it's just, it's really been a neat, uh, a neat project. And then, so there's the way to access this content from Google Earth itself, and then there's also a way to access it from a web browser. And I'm gonna go right now to Sylvia. Sylvia's Foundation has a website that lets you search through all of that educational content um, by topic. So here are some whale sharks. So my son is um, is now five, just turned five. And every night, I know some of you heard this at the Nat Geo panel, but every night uh, we do ocean tours. And we go online, we go to this site, and we search for whatever he's interested in. So whale sharks, he loves poisonous jellyfish, uh, great white sharks, and every time we show a picture, he's like, yeah, mommy, that, that doesn't play. It must be appropriate. And so he's just like, Buddha's not interested. Gotta be videos. Um, and so we go and we learn about whale sharks and we talk about shark finning. There's a really awesome video in the uh, in the Northern Marianas. I think that's amazing. Look how big that whale shark is. That's so gorgeous. Um, um, and uh, it's just really neat. And then you can you know close the content, you can zoom out. It's the plugin embedded in the website, and it lets you like go around. You can free explore if you want, and it gives you a sort of you can have a customized experience of the content from a website like this, which is a little bit um, takes a little bit of web programming, and then you can also do what Scripps has done, and you can embed this little see my stories and all of the contributions that they have added to this layer can now be viewed from their own website. So this little embeddable piece of code, if you contribute to this effort, you can put that on your own website and show all of your stories. So here are the Birch Aquarium stories. And I think Amber put all of these in for the Birch Aquarium, which is great. And they can have links, learn more, and it's the whole plugin kind of embedded on their site. And it's a, it's a neat, um, they put all of their place marks. Um, you can put in videos and photos, and the Birch Aquarium in San Diego is using this to try to communicate you know, all the projects that they're working on and where the sea dragons that they study or, or feature, where they're from, and what the habitats look like. And so it's a neat story that you can share to this you know, education layer that's in Google Earth. You can embed a version of it on your own website. And then um, you can also take the content that you've contributed and you can make a video of it. So this is our ocean showcase at earth.google.com slash ocean. And we work with Sylvia to make a Hope Spots tour, which is a long on a tour with Mission Tour. Narrated an organization founded by Sylvia Earl that is dedicated to exploring and caring for the ocean. And what we did was we worked with Sylvia to write a script And then we picked a number of pieces of content from the education layer. And then we told a story about the hope spots 
that Sylvia is working to raise awareness towards to increase greater marine protection. So next we fly to the Gulf of California. You can watch a national geographic. So the neat thing about it is that you can sort of tell a particular story with the content that is in the Google Earth layer. And you can sort of tell people what's most interesting. So you can make a tour that is just about squid, that's about just the area that you're working in. Um, really whatever story you want to tell, whatever content layers you might want to show, you can create a sort of customized experience of it. And it can be hosted on YouTube. I'm not sure if I can, sorry, I didn't anticipate on having a keyboard. So I'm just going to take us to YouTube. So YouTube is our video hosting uh, platform. And you can see here, this is our intro with Sylvia talking about the beginning of our story with John. And um, you can make a playlist on YouTube. And what I've done is create a playlist of all the tours that we've made with partners. Um, and we've made one with Jacques Cousteau, with Cousteau Society. We made one for the 100th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic, working with NOAA. And this one has had over 175,000 views, and our introductory video has had over 3 million views. So the, you can make 3D models. So here's a 3D model of the Titanic here, or the web overlay. And the nice thing about it is that you can sort of create whatever story you want, fly around, have it narrated, tell people, you can dub it in different languages. Tell them what is interesting and what you think they should know about or learn about. Um, and so we put this out for the 100th uh, anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic a few months ago. And we had some news pickup actually from some news organizations who noticed that one of the photos actually looked like where someone had fallen. It had their like cloak, their shoes still lying down on the ocean floor. And it was really neat making this tour with um, uh, the head of the NOAA Maritime Heritage Program. He had gone to the Titanic in dives and knew exactly where each of the photos needed to be placed. And he said, Titanic buffs will know if you put it in the wrong place. And so we, you know, we moved them around because we had them in wrong places around the model. He said, you can't put it in the wrong place. And we're like, OK, all right, Jim. Um, and so it was it was great working with him and so so it is a way to bring what content is out there together into a story um, and we so far have really relied on working with our partners to tell the stories and you know, we're providing this platform and then we work with partners to help tell their story um, we've worked with um, you know the Indonesia on their ocean exploration tour um, with Sylvia with um, dive and surf spots, down, well-protected areas, um, just talking about our new terrain. So it's a powerful tool, and then you can sort of track all the metrics as well. So how many people view videos, what's more popular, you can embed it, share it on social media. So I think it's a good, it's a great tool. And then I wanted to take one second and just show you that back-end content management system. So all of the content that's in our education there um, is basically uploaded through this site called the Deepness site. Um, and you can go in and create a, uh, this is a content piece that I created this morning from a photo I took of a crazy sea urchin off Panama from an expedition to Cueva, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site there. So what you can do is you go to the Deepness site and you pick an area of where you want your content to be uploaded. And anyone can get a login. Um, the content is curated just to make sure, you know, we don't want people putting inappropriate things, content in there, as far as, uh, so sometimes I go with my son to YouTube and we do searches for ocean animals, like he loves ocean dinosaurs right now. Um, but sometimes there are inappropriate ads that show up or things on the side, I'm like, no, don't look at that, you know. Um, but this is, you know, we don't want any of that, and so we, Charlotte works hard with uh, all of our volunteers and Amber to make sure that it's a you know um, you know serious. It can be humorous, but that it just doesn't have any sort of inappropriate content. So um, so you can get a login, click on add content, 
and um, we're building out the content in multiple languages, which, with the idea that in the future we'll be able to feature it in different languages. You can pick your language, your area of the ocean, sort of are you sure sharing marine life or something else. Um, Sylvia has a certain number of hope spots, and if it fits into a hope spot, you can add that there. And then you can add a title, a description, and you can um, add either a YouTube embed code, so you can host the video on your own YouTube channel, or you can actually just upload a file. So I can go to my dive photos from Koiba. Sea urchin, barnacles, sea star, coral, whatever you might want to add. Here's a nice chunk of coral, some beautiful fish. So you can, um, there's an octopus, that's very exciting. So you can add, add that photo and then upload. <coughs> you can put credits on there. And then you just hit preview save and then it gets marked as final and then within 24 hours it gets uploaded uh, and published on Google Earth.